All right. Good morning. It is Tuesday. It is 10 o'clock. I am here because I am not sick. Um, although I got water on my sweater and I didn't even realize it. Um, can someone let me know they can hear me? Uh, good morning, Allison. Um, hopefully that means you could hear me. Um, yeah, so it is Tuesday. Good morning, Barbara. Uh, and we will talk about uh, taking thoughts captive again. Uh, we'll continue on in Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. So if you have a Bible and you want to grab it, go for it. Um, before we get going, though, it uh, great. Glad you can hear me. Um, thank you, Allison. Good morning, Jill. Um, there is a potential for quite a bit of snow this coming weekend. Um, so, uh, keep your ears out or your eyes out for if we, uh, feel the need to cancel service or if roads are shut down or all that good stuff. Um, I'm kind of hoping there's some snow. I, I don't hope that we don't have service on Sunday, but I hope there's snow so I can take the kids sledding because that'd be fun. Um, and yeah, and then maybe we curl up by the fire and have some coffee and tea. Uh, Scott does not want snow, um, but it cut off the comment. So um, my ears, I, I don't even know what you're trying to say, Scott. So um, I, my brain's not interpreting the combination of those two. Um, anyhow, uh, you know, being the California boy who's not had to deal with snow, uh, snow sounds really fun. Um, but some of y'all have had to deal with it much longer and you, you know, uh, everything that goes with it. So I'm going to adjust this. I've been going to the chiropractor because my neck's been uh, bothering me and he's like, make sure you adjust your ergonomics. And so I moved my monitor up like six inches. And so now the camera's not white in the right spot. Um, anyhow, okay, so let's, uh, I'm going to share my uh, Bible program screen again, and we will consider the next descriptor that Paul uses for this passage. Application, share. Okay, so hopefully that is working. Let me jump back. Is that working for everyone? You all can see it. Good morning, Janelle. You can see my Bible program, it looks like, um, if I'm seeing what you're seeing. Anyhow, okay, so last week, not last week, two weeks ago, we talked about, uh, or three weeks ago, we talked about taking every thought captive, and then last week, or, oh my goodness, two weeks ago, we talked about, we reflected upon uh, thinking about things that are true, that uh, we can encounter things in the world that are not true. Um, we can have thoughts that are not true. Um, and this week we will think about and consider what is honorable. Um, and what's interesting as I was reading for this particular, uh, word, as I was trying to do some studying on it is, uh, the mo multiple commentators noted that what Paul is actually doing here, he's actually, uh, redeeming and using Greek terminology for virtues. Um, and so these are actually kind of ideas that are, aren't explicitly biblical. So, um, uh, finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Um, these are things that would have been common to the culture at the time that they would have, uh, Plato, Aristotle, Socrates, all those guys would have, um, before Paul uh, was born, had would have encouraged uh, society to uh, have these virtues and to think about these virtues and to consider these virtues. And for Paul, he's he's taking it and he's he's couching it in Christian understanding. So it doesn't just stop with uh, what society would define as virtue, because he says, whatever you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things and the God of peace will be with you. Um, and so uh, Paul is taking these Greek ideas of virtues and using them 
and applying them and taking them into Christian context. So, uh, so when Paul says whatever is true, he's he's obviously going to mean it in light of uh, Christian context. Uh, when he talks about whatever is honorable, it's going to be in light of Christian understanding, uh, in light of the scriptures, in light of uh, the gospel, in light of what Jesus did and showed on earth. Um, so for Paul, whatever is true would be the reality that God created the universe, um, not uh, Zeus and some other God having an argument and creation coming into existence or the idea that uh, 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 Gnosticism, like spiritual is good, physical is bad. Um, Paul wouldn't, Paul would say, no, no, we need to consider things that are true in light of the truths of scripture. So, um, but today let's think about what is honorable. So when we think about what is honorable, um, why don't you guys, if you, hi Gina, um, if you have a thought of what is honorable, why don't you like show, like put some examples in the comments of things that you would say, what is, if, if someone were to say, hey, uh, Jill or Scott or Janelle, Alice and Barbara, anyone else, uh, the two more of you who haven't commented yet, um, what what is honorable? When you think of honorable, what, what comes to your mind? Uh, maybe it's an example of a person. Maybe you... Uh, uh, maybe you can think of someone who has done something honorably. Uh, and this word is actually not just um, honorable, but it's what is praiseworthy. So um, what what, is, what would make someone honorable? What would make something honorable or praiseworthy? Um, you know, some things that I could think of initially would be, you know, we should think about, or Paul would be commending us to consider, um good art, you know, like when you can think about these things. So it's not explicitly Christian things that Paul is telling us to consider. He's telling us to consider anything that is uh, within the realm of praiseworthiness. Now, obviously, again, it all needs to be defined by this. You, you can't define biblical praiseworthiness if you don't use this or know this. So, um, or maybe you you see a news story and you see someone who has sacrificed greatly for another person. They they decided to get out of their car and push someone's car off the train track. Um, that would be something that would be honorable and praiseworthy that Paul would commend us to think about, to consider. Um, or you see someone who is committing funds or money to a great cause. Um who wants to solve a, a problem in the world, um, it's praiseworthy to think about those things, to consider them, um, or it's praiseworthy, it's a praiseworthy act or deed, and so we should consider those things and how they can spur us on. And so what's really interesting about this is I think sometimes we have a he hesitancy to um, look outside the Christian world outside the church for um, things that are worthy of our consideration. And yet Paul here is telling us to consider these things that are honorable. Um, but at the same time, what that means is we, we, we don't want to think about things that are dishonorable. So we don't want to spend our time focusing on uh, things that are dishonoring, uh, whether it be, uh, things in, in society or things in the church. Um, that doesn't mean we don't um, we don't acknowledge them. Um, yeah, that's a great example. Jill said CareNet is honorable. Um, so CareNet, yeah. CareNet is the ministry with uh, the baby bottles that we've partnered with uh, that wants to uh, reduce uh, abortions in, in the Seattle, greater Seattle area. Um, Allison says storehouse, which is a, a ministry that, uh, supports people by giving food, I believe. Um, so there are things, there are these ministries that seek to reach out and help people and they're worthy of thinking about, you know, how can we spend our time contemplating those things? Uh, the preservation of life and the supporting of people who are in need. Those are things that are 
worthy and honorable to consider and think about. Um, but at the same time, we, we don't want to think about that, which is dishonorable. Um, we don't want to dwell on it. We don't want to let it occupy our minds. That doesn't mean we, we say, well, it doesn't exist. That's, that's not what I'm trying to say. What I'm trying to say is that we don't, um, we don't let it take up space in here any more than is necessary or required. We may think about it so we can figure out ways to alleviate it or remove it, but we don't want to dwell on that which is dishonorable. And so often you can think about things that are dishonorable when you think of entertainment. Um, lots of entertainment uh, promotes dishonorable things. Um, lots of entertainment can promote honorable things too, though. But when we think of dishonorable um, things, what is the entertainment that I'm putting into my brain that I'm that I'm actively thinking on that is processing? Is this something that is good? Is it honorable? Now, um, there may be aspects or parts of a piece of entertainment that are dishonorable, but it's presented that it's dishonorable as opposed to it something that is dishonorable being presented as positive. Uh, you can you can think of movies and television shows where uh, someone does something really bad and it's presented as um, negative versus something that is presented in a movie and a television show that is really bad and it's presented as positive. Um, the thing that comes to my mind, the illustration of that is in Avengers, uh, the Marvel superhero movie, there's a character named Thanos and he, um, he is striving to get these things called the infinity stones. And the reason he wants to do that is to fix the universe because the universe is using up too much, too many of the resources. So what does he do? He gets these infinity stones and he essentially becomes godlike. And uh, at the end of one of the movies, he snaps his finger to eliminate half the life in all the universe. He, he, he essentially wipes out, takes it off the map. It is no longer there. Everyone remembers all the people that are gone, but they just, they turn into dust. Uh, that is present. That is a negative thing to end life in, in that way. I mean, it's not real, but uh, to end life, in such a way that, or to remove life in such a way uh, to say all life, half of life is bad because it's using resources. Um, that is dishonorable. And at the same time, it is portrayed as dishonorable. Um, but then you have other things where you have um, maybe James Bond kind of comes to mind is his, his kind of uh, playboy, in his uh, in his treatment of women, James Bond is portrayed as a uh, as a womanizer, and it's not portrayed negatively um, in the times that I can think of in those movies. It's not you don't come away walking well. Well, that was terrible for him to do. Uh, they don't portray that aspect of his character in a negative way. They may try to portray it as neutral. They may show it how it gets him into trouble, but it's never, um, his playboyness is never portrayed as outrightly negative. Um, and, and so you think, well, I don't want to dwell on that. Um, it's part of the movie. Uh, and so we don't want to dwell on the dishonorable things. That character quality of James Bond is not one to be praised. Um, it is not one to be emulated or thought highly of. And so how are we thinking about that? Are we, um, are we letting it take space in our mind? Or you can think of any number of television shows where um, uh, for humor's sake, they, they talk about or do dishonorable things. And so, um, what Paul is commending us to is to be thinking and considering about honorableness, um, things that we want to praise. So uh, as we take our thoughts captive, we want to make sure that the thoughts that are playing in our mind are honorable thoughts. And so as you go about your week this, uh, go about this week, I, I want to encourage you to consider um, are the thoughts that are going on in my head thoughts of honorable things or dishonorable things? Um, now, 
again, uh, that doesn't mean you uh, you avoid thinking about dishonorable th things in all contexts, but you need to think of it in appropriate ways, not not um, fostering the dishonorableness, but saying, okay, this is not honorable. And so I want to turn my mind to something that is honorable. What, what would be the uh, inverse of it? So if something that is negative comes in your mind, um, negative in uh, the dishonorable sense, uh, comes in your mind, twist it or turn it and think of what's the honorable version of this? What's the mirror image of this that would be honorable that I would uh, want to think about? So, um, yeah, I think uh, it's a good thing to consider as we think about taking our thoughts captive, whatever is honorable. Uh, think about those things and, and ask yourself, where am I seeing what's honorable? What um, Am I putting things that, it, that fosters honorable thoughts uh, as I go about my daily life? So, uh, friends, I hope that's an encouragement to you to consider that. Um, maybe you can think of, maybe you can say, hey, I'm going to spend the week focusing on this honorable thing. Um, you can take a, a virtue, a, a biblical virtue this week and focus on it. Uh, maybe take a, one of the fruit of the spirit or um, one of the other lists of things that um, Paul does or Bible verse. That would be an honorable thing to think about. Um, or think about a character in the Bible uh, that does honorable things like Joseph and his brothers, how he treats them at the end of Genesis. Um, or maybe you think of David in his uh, treatment of Saul um, or any other number of things. Uh, Joseph of Arimathea's care for the body of Christ after his death. Um Spend some time reflecting on those honorable character qualities, those praiseworthy things, and uh, let those dwell in your mind instead of the dishonorable things that you see in the world around you. So I uh, hope you have a great week, friends. Uh, hopefully we'll see you Sunday. If you need anything, let us know. And again, keep your eyes, ears peeled, and we will let you know if uh, for some reason we have to cancel. Uh, yeah, and I will talk to you later.